Hey, this is Jeff Plate from the Trans Siberian Orchestra. You are listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hey, you are listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I'm Bruce. And I'm Chris. And today we're missing Rina. But that's yeah. okay. Yeah, so she'll quit interrupting us for the uh, for the next half hour or so. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. We pick on the people who are not here. Yeah. So today we're speaking with Jeff Plate from the Trans Siberian Orchestra, and they're going to be doing like a streaming thing this uh, this holiday season because they can't tour. It's going to be great, man. I I can't wait to see it. Hello. Hey, Jeff. How are you, Bruce Moore? Good. 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 Hey, Chris. Nice to meet you, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks. Nice. This year, the TSO is doing something totally different than they've ever done before, which is yep. doing doing the show's live stream. This is obviously because of COVID. How long did it take you guys to kind of put this together? And and is it going to be like a big show that streamed kind of like if you see a live concert? Or is it going to be like a more intimate, stripped down acoustic thing? Well, to answer your first question, I think that the, the planning actually started as soon as COVID became an issue. And, you know, honestly, for me, back at the end of March, beginning of April, I, I told my wife, I said, I'm not touring this year. This thing is going to get out of control. So, you know, we were obviously talking to, to management and everything the whole time. And they were literally holding out to the last minute. But at the same time, they were trying to come up with a backup plan. Um, you know, while all this is going on, we're watching other bands do these live stream shows and these, these Skype shows, these zoom shows and all this and that. And it's just, I mean, you have to adapt to your situation and deal with it. So they kind of had this whole thing in the works, I would say probably since spring. I mean, they, they're, they're no dummies. They knew they had to figure something out. Um, so, you know, to say it was, to say anything came around last minute is not true, but we were holding out, hopefully, to do some live shows to the last minute, and then we had to resort to this. But uh, to answer your question about the show, you know, the, the people, the management company that I have, the production staff that I have with TSO, they are involved in this, and I know this thing is going to be spectacular. What is it going to look like? I honestly can't even tell you. I... I've seen a lot of the other streaming stuff and, you know, a lot of that is kind of a stripped down, uh, bare bones performance. This is going to be everything in the, in the vein of TSO in, in the, in the, in the spirit of Paul O'Neill, who wants to do everything and anything at one time. <laughs> uh, this is, this, this is going to be that kind of a show. And I'll be honest with you. I, I can't wait till we do this because watching it play back at some point, it's going to be, it's going to be really cool. Well, the first thing I thought of when I heard about it, I was like, there's no way that they can strip this down. Like, because everything's <laughs> always over the top, right? Like, it, with, with the TSO, it's just as much as possible all the time. So, and it's very storytelling yeah. and it's very theatrical. And my first thought was like, is this going to be like uh, Pink Floyd does the wall, you know, almost like where instead of the visuals being on screens, they actually take up the full screen and they go back and forth between a band playing on like an arena sized stage. You know, I just, there's so many things yep. that came to my mind. I was like, what's going to happen here? Well, you and me both. I mean, I mean like <laughs> I said, I, you know, I've been sitting in the middle of this thing from the first note. So, you know, but to your point, let's, let's look back when we first started touring and, you know, in 1999, it was, it was a box truck and a couple dozen lights and a fog machine. And, and that was, people loved it. So it's not that we're going to go back to that, but the spirit of TSO is, you know, that's where it all began. Now, now, like I just said, I, I know the people that are involved in this, and this is going to look really, really cool. It's going to sound great. Uh, but what that is going to be exactly, I, I really don't know. When do you start rehearsals for it? Or have you started already? Uh, we, we've all started, you know, we've got our, our rehearsal tapes, our rehearsal files and stuff like that, that we're, we're going through the stuff, you know, it's, it's the, the band this year is a combination of East and West. And, you know, this is something where, where myself, El Petrelli, Chris Caffrey and Johnny Middleton, you know, we've, we've been the, the core group 
for all of the one band performances. You know, when we did the Beethoven's tour, when we did the, 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 the European tours. So, so we're kind of going right back to the, to the beginning, you know, it's like the, the four guys that have been there from the start that are still here. We are going to, we are going to head up this thing. And then we've got singers from both East and West, some other musicians from East and West. And, you know, it's basically going to be like an all-star group. Oh, it's amazing. The, the thing I'll, I'll say this, the thing that shocked me about this is I thought like if this was going to happen, cause I actually thought about this before I learned that you guys were doing a live stream. I was like, I wonder if the TSO is going to do a licensing deal with a major network, you know, to, to do like a big streaming Christmas concert. So was that an option or was that ever a thought that came across your guys' plate or I, like, I don't know how to phrase that really, but. No, I know exactly what you're saying. And to be, to be honest with you, I, I am not, I'm not aware of that. It's, it's honestly something that I've never even asked management about. I am sure that something came across the table like this. And I think in, uh, boy, you know, that's an interesting question. And I think maybe that's, that's something for, for down the road to think about. There's, there's always a lot of, I mean, doing this live stream thing, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of hurdles and there's a lot of, a lot of speculation. You know, everybody's kind of tentative about it. On one hand, it's, it's not going to be cheap to do this. You know, are we going to have enough of an audience to make this worth our while? Uh, the O'Neill family, you know, Paul's wife and daughter, they, they have to, they have to sign off on all this too. So, you know, in keeping in the spirit of Paul, and I'm always going to go back to Paul because without him, we would not be here. And he had a very, very unique way of thinking about uh, performances and events like this. We have been asked a million times about doing a live DVD. Paul's feeling about the whole thing was, well, it, if you're not in the room to see the TSO show, you're not going to get what it is. No, no matter how much, no matter how much camera work and how much you do to a DVD, you're not going to really, you're going to capture the show, but there's going to be a huge ele- element of it that's missing. And he never felt that that was, that would be fair. He, you know, here again, it's a, he wanted you to come to see the show and that's why he went to, every length possible to put on the best production and, and the best bands on the stage for, for these, for these shows. But, uh, you know, as, as far as the television thing, sure. I, I would imagine it was talked about, but I would imagine also that, that keeping Paul in mind that it was something that they knew from the beginning that they weren't, weren't going to do. Cool. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand that, you know, from that point of view, like even today I was like, Oh, I want to, sp- brush up on my TSO, I'm going to go on YouTube and see what's there <laughs> for live. And there's there's no live footage other than like fan shot stuff that I could find. Yeah. And like I saw, yeah. I found one guy, these three people went to the show and shot it on their cell phones and they did like multicam edits and like, I was just like, <laughs> I was they, like uh, it's not even official, you know? And I was like, they, wow. They, they, actually, they actually do a really good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of that stuff I watch. So listen, I, and I probably know exactly who you're talking about. Uh, you know, these guys show up every year. They, they know the show. They, okay. Who's, you know, okay. It's narration time. It's, you know, George is singing now. Oh, Joel is soloing. Chris is soloing. Oh, there's a keyboard. You know, they're on it. They're yeah. on it. And a lot of, a lot of it looks really cool. Um, you know, one of the, the one, the one documentary we did, uh, some years ago, the birth of rock theater we were doing mm-hmm. our Beethoven's last night tour. And at the end of that tour, we did a, we did a special called the birth of rock theater. And, and that's something for you to check out because that really is a professionally shot live performance that we did right at the end of the tour. It was, you know, Paul O'Neill was talking about the concept of TSO and the story of Beethoven's last night and, you know, everything involved in it. That is really the most uh, professionally shot you know, TSO approved video that's out there. And, you know, for what it's worth, it really does give you a good impression of what the show is. I mean, it, it captured all the effects, you know, all the vocalists, all the moving around on stage and everything that was going on. But, but yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting and, and we got to love our fans. We would not be here without them, but it's funny because some of them show up and they never watch the show. They're watching the, the screen on their phone or the screen on their cameras. Like, dude, 
can't you just look up once in a while? <laughs> I can't stand that. I've seen so so many shows where people got their phones up there. But I think you've become like part of everyone's like holiday tradition almost now. So many years later, right? What did you say it was twenty one years now? Since nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you've become part of everyone's like Christmas or holiday season. I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and ours too. I mean, this is yeah. all I've known for the past 20 plus years is, you know, I'll be honest with you. It wasn't until like yesterday, the day before yesterday, it kind of like hit me. It's like, wow, I should be on stage right now. You know? right. <laughs> it's just kind of like at the, at the end of October, you know, we had the rehearsals and all of a sudden Halloween came around. It's like, wow, usually I am at rehearsal during Halloween and I'm watching you know, Monday night football. I can't see. So I can't see the football games on Sunday, but I can watch. You know, it's like all this stuff just started running through my head. It's like, wow, this is a little, a little weird. Even though I've been thinking about this for months and have been prepared for it, but it's, uh, it really is something else. And in Trans Siberian Orchestra, to your point about the tradition and all this and that, you know, Paul had a very, very good game plan with this, and it was a put on a great show. B, Paul's story brought everybody in, and Paul's story connected everybody. Right. Um, and then you keep the ticket prices reasonable, so you can bring, you know, you can bring your your wife, your kids, your grandparents, your you know the neighbors' kids, whatever, and, and afford to go to the show. And it's something that you know he was very very adamant about every year. The charity aspect of it, he was adamant about. Doing, doing the meet and greets and the autograph lines after the shows he was very adamant about. But this was all part of us connecting with these fans. And they show up every year, sometimes yeah. more than once a year. And, and, you know, if it wasn't for them, and I know it sounds cliche, but if it wasn't for them, we would not be here. I would not be talking to you right now. So it's, it's pretty cool. But there's also, there's also this, this sense of responsibility with it, too, because when we go into these tours, we know – this tour has to be different than the last one. It's got to be better than the last one. And you know that going in every year, you're, you're trying to up your game because these people, these people don't want to come back and see the same show, e right. even though it's hard to keep up with one show in general, but you want to give them new music. You want to give them a different story, a different lighting scheme, different video. You know, there's so many things you can do. And, you know, that was something that Paul was very, very aware of and, you know, it's it's a big part of the connection with our fans. You know, the how different. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say one of the things that I noticed um, is that this is like the only band that I've ever heard of that went from rehearsal to arena. They, there was no opening bands. There was no club gigs. It was just rehearsal, sold out arenas. How how did you? How was that dealt with? How like that just blows my mind away. Well, we did start in theaters. Oh, so okay. We, we didn't go. We didn't go straight to to arenas. We we did theaters for I think the first four tours. Um, yeah, man, it's remarkable. We are the only band who's ever done that. Who's ever gone? Who's ever been its only headlining band with no opening act? <laughs> you know, like you said, straight straight from rehearsals right to a headlining tour, but. In 1999, we did a seven-show tour, and it was really just a trial. How in the heck is this going to translate to the people? How, you know, how are we going to pull off the story? How are we going to pull off the music? Blah, blah, blah. And it worked. So seven shows in the first year went to 70 the next year. Wow. This is, this is, when, the, this, this is when the original group split in two. And... And keep in mind, when we first started touring, we were trying to do this tour between Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve. So all of a sudden, bam, you get this, you know, multiply times 10, the amount of shows you have. We took the core group, split it in two, created two different touring groups. And then every year just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, here we are all these, late, all these years later, we do roughly... Between the two bands, 110 shows in seven weeks. So, <laughs> so, so my my TSO East group does normally close to 60 shows in seven weeks. We do a show on Wednesday. We do a show Thursday. 
We do two on Friday, two on Saturday, two on Sunday. Holy so we're doing cow. We're, we're doing eight shows a week. And just depending on how the calendar falls, we may be playing six days a week. It's, it's, um, it's remarkable. But going from, there were more questions than answers. Let me, let me put it that way. When we first started touring, we had no idea what was, what was going to happen. And, you know, like I said, I've been sitting in the middle of this from the beginning and going from a half full theater to sold out theater to sold out theater tour to an arena to sold out arenas. And then to sold out arenas twice a day, it's just, it blows my mind. It really does. It's, it's unbelievable to me. And I just think at the end of it, you probably need a year off just to recover. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's, an, it, I, that's an intense schedule. It, I, it's unbelievable. It really is. And I tell you, we, um, the band, it's one thing for the band to maintain this schedule. And, you know, trust me, we've, we've had, we've been fortunate that both groups have been really pretty solid for the past 10 years. So everybody knows when you show up for this tour, you're going to get your ass kicked. So you better be in shape. You better behave. You better get your rest because once this tour start, start, it does not stop. There is no, you know, we have every singer backs up every singer. In case somebody gets sick or loses their voice, you know, the show goes on regardless. But but really, our crew are the ones that bear the brunt of this. You know, these guys, it's unreal. Like I said, when you're doing three days, two show days, three days in a row, and these guys pack up in Buffalo, say, on Saturday night, and then we're ready for a matinee at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in Philly the next day, it's unreal. Well, yeah, they're guys, busting their these, ass. These guys get her done. I tell you, it, they are the best of the best, and it's just remarkable. That actually brings me to my next question. With with how COVID is just like, de- I don't think there's another industry that's been decimated like the music industry uh, during COVID, especially for crew members, people that are like grips and, you know, like sound guys to even catering. Um how are you guys dealing with that aspect of it? Are you making sure all your crew is brought back in? Um, you know, how, how are you dealing with that aspect of it? Cause that's, that, that's, they, they're probably like your family at a lot of the time, you know, all these people, you see them every day and suddenly there's no work. So how are you guys dealing with that side of it? Um, you mean as far as the the streaming show, or just yeah, done? yeah, like for the streaming show, are they all coming back to kind of help with that show, or how is that well, working? Well, it, yeah, it's not necessary to bring them all back. You know, it's it's yeah. like you we're only doing one show. It is going to be a smaller show. You know, obviously we're not in an arena; we're on a soundstage. Yeah, um, but there are certain people that we can't do this without. You know, our audio technicians, the laser guys, the, the lighting designers, all, all the, the techs, you know, my drum tech, you know, Tony, Tony's like one of my best friends, you know, he's right there by my side. He has been there for all these years. And so we can't bring everybody back into the fold for this show, but we, we have, we have everybody that we need. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, hey, you know, it's it's not like it's dog eat dog, but there's really only so much you can do in a situation like that. And I've, uh, I I know a lot of, a lot of crew guys make good money. You know, they work all year round. They, most of the crew guys that are on TSO are are on the crew of some other major tour the rest of the year, oh, absolutely. if not a couple major tours. So 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 these guys are, you know, in theory. If everybody was smart, they probably got something to to lean on to get through these times. But uh, but yeah, it's just unbelievable. You know, I'll tell you, I wonder about how many bands are going to get knocked off because of this. Yeah, you know, because there's a lot of there's a lot of older bands. I don't want to say older, but I mean older. I guess yeah, the '80s bands, the, the you know even some of the '70s bands that are still touring. You know, they're still touring, or they were touring. A lot of them are touring because they they blew all their money back in the day, and this is what they have to do to make a living. Yeah, 
how many of these people are going to survive? You know, who's going to come out of this? I, I just really, it really makes me wonder. And here again, it makes me, you know, that much more thankful about the Trans-Siberian Orchestra because it is, it is such a, it's such a tradition. It is such a, you know, it comes around every year and, Man, I don't see any end in sight. It's just unbelievable what happened this year that it that it knocked t- even TSO off the rails. So, yeah, it's 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 been crazy for the music business. That's what I was I want to I wanted to ask you that question because it's so um, so like ev- it's the music industry has just been hammered in a way that I've never seen. Yeah, another industry hammered like my wife works in hospitality. She manages lots of restaurants, mm-hmm. and her industry was decimated. But when I look at the music industry, I, I, there's, it just doesn't even compare to the hospitality industry. Yep, yep. And you think about the, the five or ten years prior to COVID, when, when all of a sudden album sales were kind of thrown out the window, and you know you had to you had to have a you, you had to get played eight thousand times on Spotify to make ten bucks. It's like, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, all of that, all of that's been completely flipped upside down. And that's, that was kind of my point about these bands that tour. That's the, really the only way to make money a lot of times. It and, is. Unless yeah. you have a real, unless you have a hit song, unless you get licensed for something, advertisement, you know, you got some great merchandise, whatever, you got to hit the road and you got to be good and you got to, you got to draw fans. But record sales, that's just a whole different ball game now. And it's, it's really pretty sad. It is. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll go back positive though. I had never heard of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra prior to 2011. So I was kind of like an outlier, you know? Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I ended up going on this, this metal cruise called 70,000 Tons of Metal. And, and, ah. um, and I met a guy there uh, named Wolfgang. And he told me yep. about Trans-Siberian Orchestra. I was like, what's this? He's like, you don't know about this? <laughs> and he made me see all these videos. I'm like, holy crap, they're playing arenas. It's like, it's huge. <laughs> How did I not know about this? <laughs> uh, was, was, was it Wolfgang Rot? Yeah. 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 Well, I've, I've known Wolfgang for. Uh, so, so TSL was kind of born out of the band Sabotage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so, when I joined Sabotage in 94, we. We did a couple of records. I ended up going to, to Germany. We toured in, in Europe in 96, and that's where I met Wolfgang for the first time. And so I've, I've known him for, you know, 25 years. What, what, what cruise was it? 70, I've done a couple of those. 70,000 tons yeah, of metal. I've done, I, I did one of those with Metal Church, and I did a, uh, a Monsters of Rock cruise with Metal Church, too. Nice. nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's such a different yeah. experience being on a boat watching metal. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you know what? I got off that boat and my legs were so sore because you don't realize the whole time you're actually balancing yourself 24 hours a day because yeah, you're yeah. never really level. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, so to your point about being the outlier, you know, even even to this day, some people locally, they know, they know that I'm a drummer. They know I play in this big band and what's the name of your band again? And I'll be like trans Grand orchestra. And they kind of look at your head, look at you, you know, with their head cocked, like what? And I, and I just go, you know, dun, 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 dun. and I go, <laughs> Oh yeah, I know you guys. <laughs> so it's, it's remarkable to think that we've been doing this for 20 years. There are so many people who have not seen us or really don't know anything about us. And this is, this is really one of the cool things about this streaming show is because TSO, you know, we can't be everywhere all the time. There, there are some people who can't be at our show because we are logistically just too far away or, right. or they, are, they are too busy or, you know, whatever. Life gets in the way. Nothing should get in the way of this. You know, you can stream this right in your living room with your family. You don't have to go anywhere. You can be in you can be anywhere in the world and watch this show. And I think it's going to really open us up to a whole new audience of people. And hopefully more people will recognize the music. You know, I think whenever TSO plays and I tell people this all the time, it's like you could come to our show without knowing anything about us and you will recognize some of our songs. If you don't recognize, 
if you don't recognize the song, you're going to recognize a lot of these holiday melodies. You're going to recognize some classic melodies. And I guarantee you, by this time, you've heard Christmas Eve, Sarajevo. You've, you've heard Wizards of Winter. You've heard Mad Russians. You know, whether it was in the mall or at the gas station or wherever, you've heard this music. So it's, it's really kind of interesting that, uh, that this show, this streaming show, is as much as we wish we weren't doing it, uh, I think this is going to be a big boost for us. And it's going to be awesome. Like I said, I, I am just as curious and anxious as everybody. But uh, I know it's going to be, no, it's going to be very cool. So I could- think at the end, Oh, go ahead, I was say, I think at the end of the day, sorry, I think at the end of the day, though, it's also really cool that you're able to bring in this weird climate that little bit of holiday cheer or whatever to people's living rooms. That's going to be a yes. nice kick, too. Yes. And, and here we go back to the tradition, back to the, you know, responsibility of TSO. I, I do think we bring something much different to the table in respect to that. Uh, when our tickets go on sale, it's just, you know, people can't wait. They can't wait. They get their ticket. They get the family all lined up. They get their friends lined up. And, you know, they cannot wait to come see our show again. A, because they just love the show and, and the music. But it's a, it's a place that they're going to meet and see a lot of people that they've met throughout the years at our shows. It's a, it's a huge family get-together in one sense or the other. But uh, but it's, it's awesome. I mean, I think that... Um, at the end of the day, the show is so unique, and the fact that it is that it has so many so many really you know heart touching and you know historic holiday themes in it, they're timeless. Right. You can't you can't avoid recognizing something or or liking our show. Liking our show, I I, I dare you to come to our show <laughs> and, and and think that we totally stink. You know, we, we, we do what we do very, very well. And from my position on the stage behind the drum kit, I can see people, I can tell who's never seen us before. And I can tell who's seen us a bunch of times because the ones that have seen us a number of times, you know, you watch them, they, they know where to look, they know what's coming, you know, they have an idea. Most of the people that have never seen us before, as soon as we hit 1224, their face lights right up like, Oh, that's those guys. <laughs> and then we've got them. Right. You know, at the end of the show, they're on their feet clapping, and, and that's, and then they come see us again next year. And that's how this whole thing is snowballed in, into where we are. That's so, awesome. So, where can people get tickets for this show? TSOLivestream.com and then trans Siberian.com. Tickets are available at both sites, they're 30 bucks. The show is available for 24 or 48 hours after the initial performance. So oh, wow. if you, if you missed it, you can catch it within two days. Uh, I do believe that you can watch it once you bought it. I think it's available to you for that 48 hours, as many times as you want to watch it. Uh, there's some merch bundles there. There is, um, you are able to give the, the live stream ticket as a digital gift to somebody also. So oh, that's cool. You know, we, we've, we've, uh, we've, we've done a lot to try to make this, you know, accommodating and fun for the fans. And, you know, obviously we want, we want everybody to, to tune in, you know, buy your ticket, get your family together, crank us through the stereo, turn on your Christmas lights, you know, candles, whatever, make a thing out of it. So, I, I think it's it's just going to be interesting. Everybody's going to have the best seat in the house. And you know? I can't believe how affordable <laughs> that is. Because, yeah, that's great. Uh, because some people might say $30 for a stream, but if you think about your whole family watching it for $30, that's a steal. Plus, you don't have to drive. You don't have to pay for parking. You don't got to pay for popcorn. You don't got to pay <laughs> yeah, for... Right. You know, it's unbelievable. All of the, uh, you don't get stuck in a traffic jam. It's It's, like I said, this is... This is very affordable, but it's also just going to be the most convenient show. This will be the most convenient TSO show ever. So, <laughs> That's but, great. Like, like I said, I, I just hope people, I just hope people, you know, if you've never heard us before, never, never seen us before, please check it out because there's, there's something in our show for everybody. No matter what genre of music, no matter how old you are, there's something here for you. And Yeah. Like I said, I, I think this is going to be a, a unique opportunity for us to uh, to build on our fan base and 
And you know what? Here again, give our fans a treat. They've been with us for 20 plus years. And this is uh, here again in the spirit of Paul O'Neill, who, there you who go. fought tooth and, tooth and nail every year to keep ticket prices low for our shows. Uh, this is right in the spirit of that. So, you know, we, 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 we take everything that Paul taught us and, and we run with it. You know, we, we try to, we try to maintain his legacy and, and make, make the guy proud. So, but regardless, this show is going to be awesome. And I, and I, I'm really hoping a lot of people tune in. Well, awesome. awesome. I know I will be. Thank you, my friend, for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Stay safe. No problem. Ha- happy holidays. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effing Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. <laughs>